So this is what happens when the dogs are ready for their walk. They get so excited. What do you guys think? You ready? Maggie? Daisy? Go down. I have to find my shoes. Maggie, you wanna go for a walk? Daisy, are you ready? Let me get my shoes. We'll go into the tender. We're gonna go over to Sydney Island and take the dogs for a little walk and a hike. My sister's coming too. Okay, hold on, I gotta pull the tender in. Anyway, I don't drop my phone overboard. And you got one. Daisy's a bit of a daredevil. I've got to pull the tender in more for Maggie. But she gets in. Izzy. Izzy. What do you think about bringing the dogs on a boat? Uh, I don't know. They're loud. They're loud? Why? Because they keep screaming and running across the deck all day and night. Well, that's the coon hound, isn't it? So this is Daisy and Maggie. They both love to be on the boat. Daisy just runs back and forth and back and forth from bow to stern. And I know you guys are all gonna talk to me about pooping and peeing, but we just let them poop and pee on the deck and then we just wash it off. We tried the whole green grass thing, but eh, didn't quite work too well with us. But here we are, Sydney Spit. Sydney Spit is an amazing island just off of Sydney, British Columbia. It's actually called Sydney Island and was originally known as Salis Island. It was one of the earliest places settled on Canada's Pacific coast. It was on the route from Fort Victoria to the Fraser River Gold Rush in 1858. In 1859, the Hudson Bay Company began offering land for sale on the island. To make it appear more civilized and attractive to buyers, they changed its name to Sydney Island. From 1906 to 1915, the Sydney Tile and Brick Company utilized the island's fine clay, operated in the area now within the marine park, which is why there's so many broken red bricks that can still be found along the shoreline and underbrush. In 1910, a group of Victoria businessmen purchased Sydney Island as a hunting preserve, though vegetable farming and raising sheep continued for some decades. Some of the huge old-growth Douglas fir timber was logged during the two world wars, and in its place, vigorous stands of second growth have flourished. In 1981, the northern sector of the island became the Sydney Spit Marine Park. We had so much fun checking out the island and taking the dogs for a walk. We found old tracks from the old machinery. We checked out a uh, Biffy or an outhouse that was actually closed because of nesting birds. I guess you just don't want to disturb those birds when you're doing your business. We even found some old tanks, which I think it's a tank. We just weren't really sure what it was. Izzy had so much fun looking at the wildlife and she actually picked up a little garter snake that we checked out. Don't worry, we were very, very gentle with it. The dogs love their walk, especially Daisy, because there's just so much stuff to sniff around. And for us Vancouver Islanders, Sydney Island is best known as Sydney Spit for its long spit of sand that heads on out to the ocean. Her boat, that's my sister's boat, is called Our Time. 
And ours right now is called Wind Barker, which is kind of ironic because having a coon hound on board, it's kind of the right name. But she is registered as Tangaroa. We just haven't done the name change yet. So there's our time and Wind Barker, AKA Tangaroa. And we just come up. And once we get up to there, Izzy grabs the bow line. This could get interesting. And then Daisy just likes to launch herself on shore. And the dog does too. Maggie, you gonna get up? Daisy, toss the line in. Okay, we're gonna go check the crab trap is. We gotta go crab for dinner, so just toss it back in. Be right back. Hey, if you want, you can go rinse the dog off on the bow with the hose. Up on the bow, starboard locker. It's a beautiful night out. Starboard locker on the bow. Right there. So many crab traps out here. I think it's because it's a mucky bottom, but let's see if we get anything. You can check the current right here. So we've got a little marker on it right now. And I've almost got a hundred feet of line here, but Blaine's gonna pick it up and he's gonna haul it up. And we'll see if you've got any crabs. In it we have fish guts. What else did we put in there? Holy fish guts. I had some leftover steak. Um, I put in some crab food and some oil. So we'll see what happens. So to tell you a secret, Blaine absolutely hates crabbing. But I love bringing him along just as he lifts up the trap for me and eh, I choose not to. It's always good to have someone who will do something for you. Right, Blaine? Look at that. There's one there and one there. So that some of them are going to go back overboard. We're going to check that one. We'll have to check him. He's, he's old. Look at all those crustaceans that are on him. All the barnacles. Mr. Hands. Well, you know what? They liked the crab bait I put in there in the plastic bag with the oil. Well, oh, he fell out. Bye bye, little crab. Yeah, he's kind of small. He was too small. He just fell out of the crab. We're going backwards down. Blah, blah, blah. Ah! This one I think is a keeper. So we just got to check to see if it's a boy or a girl. And how you know that is if you turn it around, Lane's going to pull it out of there. I'll help Lee. So we turn it around. Is it a lighthouse or a beehive? That is a lighthouse, which is basically long and skinny. So turn it around, Blaine, show us. So you can see on the bottom, that's a lighthouse and that means it's a boy, so we can keep it. Yay, we got crab for dinner. See, this is cocktail hour. This is what we do on the boat. Got my cocktail, we've got our crab traps out catching dinner. Gonna have to go and pick those up pretty soon, see what we get. We're at Sydney Island, which is supposedly awesome for a Dungeness crab, right Krista? Why is it so awesome for Dungeness crab? Eelgrass and Sandy Bottom. There's a lot of eelgrass, you can see it caught on the back of the boat. But see that boat over there, the Silverton? It is a Silverton 45, 453. That is my sister's boat. They just renamed it to our time, which is perfect. And they're on their honeymoon. This is their last night of their honeymoon and they get to join us for my birthday. And here we are just anchored out because you didn't want to anchor in too close to Sydney Island because of the sensitive eelgrass area that they prefer you to anchor out here. Cheers. Look at that. Sunset over the so I tried something new today. Do you see the fat tug can in there? So what I did is I took my empty fat tug can from my husband and I put prawn and crab bait in there and then I put this attractant in there called Procure right here. Then I shoved a whole bunch of holes in it and I put it in there. Check it out. 13 crabs. All Dungeness off of Sydney Island. And you know what? Thank you to Fat Tug. I have to say that. Check it out. Fat Tug, you are amazing. We are about to have an awesome birthday dinner.
Being that it was my birthday and Krista's birthday, plus the end of Krista and Dave's honeymoon, we had an amazing crab and steak dinner on the aft deck of Tangaroa. So the only thing is when you catch crab is you gotta clean it. But we're so excited here because we got a whole bunch and Dave's gonna show us how. Say, these are my last words. These are my last words. I am going to be yummy in your mouth because it is Janice's birthday. All right, here we A bit go. barbaric, what are we gonna right. do? We're gonna go now. Ah! The dog watching, Daisy's like, what is going on? So now we have two parts. Okay, perfect on our swim platform. Wash all the guts out, get the brains out, it's kinda nasty, but. But you know what guys, this is the circle of life. Goodbye. And we're putting the crab guts back in the water because they're just going to feed more crabs. There's one. Check it out. So yummy. It's going to go into there. This was a, a male. It's so yummy. Again, you've got to look for the difference between male and female. Males have what we call a lighthouse. Females have a beehive. We don't have any females here because we took them all back overboard. There we go. Here, check it out. Let's show you the male. Yeah, show us what a male is. Yeah, I can't really do a comparison. Oh, this guy's... That guy is lively. He's lively. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Don't drop him overboard. What are you doing? Okay. He's fighting me. Quit fighting. Oh, yeah, see, that is see this? a lighthouse. A beehive is quite a lot fatter and shorter. So you know if it's a male or female. Females we throw back because we want to keep the crab population going here in British Columbia. I want to give a warning to anybody who's going to go to Sydney Island and Sydney Spit to Anchor. These crab boats come flying through the anchorage, especially if you're rafted up. We had to run to make sure that our time and Tangaro were not slamming together and damaging each other. Here. That one right on through. Luckily, there was no damage, but you have to say, I was pretty pissed off. What do you think, kids? How do you like driving the boat? Why? Are you stressed? No, I just don't like it. Why? I don't. You don't know. Poor Izzy did not like to drive the boat, but she had to learn somehow, so we left her at the wheel. We headed back to our home port of Brentwood Bay with Daisy at watch on the bow with wonderful memories of Sydney Spit, Sydney Island, our birthdays, and lots of crap. Join us next time we have a bit of a crazy weekend with the dogs on board.